Hello, everybody. Welcome in. <laughs> uh, today was a fantastic day at work and another marathon, but the only reason I was smiling before I left was uh, working with Jimmy and Jeremy can never be a bad day. So thank you both very much uh, for keeping me happy in our final stretch. I really appreciate you both. As to why you're here tonight, I was going to do a video, a one on a 101 on eBay, but I decided to change gears at the last minute. I just want to share some treasures of my art glass, part of my art glass collection. Um, I've collected Loton art glass. I've collected... Um, Orient and Flume, and I've also collected Grant Randolph, um, as contemporary as I get in my art glass collection. You know that I'm used to collecting antique Tiffany, also antique Lotz, and also antique Stuben glass. So me going a little bit more contemporary with Loton art glass is slightly out of the ordinary, but this is the Loton Art Glass Book, and I wish I could get, let me see if I can tip it for you. Nope, I can't do it. It's by Thomas O'Connor and Charles Loton, and this book is an incredible, incredible guide to Charles Loton and his sons that were glass artists, and when you start to get into the color portion of this book, you are going to be amazed by some of the things that you see. Um, paperweight glass vases, paperweights themselves, different techniques that he used, um, his Mandarin yellow and his, um, his Asian inspired colors of some of his pieces, the Jack in the Pulpit vases. Um, why put this in here? And of course, you know, now it's, it's, it, it wants on camera, so I'll do it. Make sure that if you get this book, that you get the value guide with it as well. It's a corresponding guide that's a loose leaf, um, uh, leaflet that goes inside of the book. And it will give you all of the current values of Loton Glass in 1990, 1991. I will tell you that values have risen since then. Um, it, for the most part. Um, and, and here are some of his, uh, again, I, I wish I could get this book completely in the um, camera, but I'm just giving you perfume bottles, uh, miniatures, jewelry, um, King Tut swirl, peacock plumes. Um, his, his work was, mm, I would say, of contemporary art glass. Look at these forms and how, how the design wraps around these forms, even though it's encased glass. I, I, I'm, I'm completely amazed by Loton glass. I, I always have been. And the color and the saturation, uh, the forms, the style. Again, this book is unbelievable. So if you love art glass and you love things slightly more contemporary, um, I suggest going for this. The Cobra lamp with the paperweight shade, uh, or, um, what he considered Millefiori shade. Um, these miniatures are incredible. And I brought out two of my miniatures to show you, so I guess I should start there. So we'll leave that open. But um, two of my miniature vases, this is not a miniature. This is just a very small vase. This is Loton, and it's Mandarin Yellow, uh, what he considered his Mandarin Yellow. Unfortunately, uh, let's see if I can get it here. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it for you. But that one, let me try and zoom in. There is the Charles Loton, L-O-T-T-O-N signature. And I believe it's from the, I thought this one was from the late 70s or the early 80s. This one's from, um, looks like 1983 is what it says. Notice the sheared and ground bottom. So he finishes his work so beautifully. Look at that yellow. That is one of the most true, vibrant, beautiful yellows in this almost lustrous matte finish. It's so beautiful and it's also wonderful to feel. The surface is so heavenly. The form, the profile, the line of this, very sensual, very beautiful. And look, it's got a slightly iridescent surface. Again, the camera's not going to pick up the beauty of some of these things. You've just got to trust me. This has been in my collection for quite a long time. Again, years ago, this was only, I believe I picked this up for, mm, I want to say it was like 
35 or $45. I bought one more recently from an antique store for 80, which was a steal. These earlier pieces like this, although, although very plain and very simple and very small in scale, this would today still bring 150 to 175. So be on the lookout for Loton and early Charles Loton. Um, so I'll, I'll show you two of the miniatures now. This one, let's start with this one. This one, of course, I had it wrapped up because I am going to do a show with these, a local show with these. But look at this for a miniature, miniature, uh, incredible. I, I trip over this one because the surface and the colors... Here is Charles' signature, Charles Loton, and this room's from 1989. Look at the sheared and ground polished bottom, the craft, the skill, the artistry. Charles Loton was born in, I believe it was 1935, and I think he passed away in 2021. Um, you can double check those dates, but he had a 51 year career as a glass artist and the things that he produced, magical, beautiful. And look how small this is. It is tiny. It is a true miniature, but you can see in the book these, um, tiny miniature vases. Be on the lookout because they can bring premium prices. Um, they're small in stature, but they're mighty in form and color. And again, very reminiscent of Tiffany Art Glass from 1900. And he's producing this almost a hundred years later, 89 years later to be exact. And his form and his it's it's his color and his craft that always got me. And I loved how small, but that this vase was 360 degrees of nothing but beauty. So um, it is on a cobalt base, which makes it even more beautiful because the push and pull of that surface is, is heavenly. That is one heck of a beautiful vase. So that's one of the miniatures. Let me wrap that back up so I don't ruin anything here. And again, thank you so much for joining me. I don't think I got an opportunity to thank you. I just jumped right Right into this video and got up and running. Now this one is a lava vase and I have four, yeah, I have four larger and this is the only miniature lava I have. So this is one of his lava vases. And again, it was um, a nod to uh, Tiffany Lava from the turn of the century, um, 1895 through 1910 or so. Uh, and that's loosely dated. Uh, I'll leave that exact date up to the experts. But this is Charles Loton from 2010. And again, I want you to understand that I do not collect contemporary, and I don't collect contemporary art glass. I don't seek it out, yet look at the collection of contemporary art glass I have. I bent the rules for these because they were just so beautiful beautiful and so fantastic. Again, from the top, it's a stunner. From the side, it's a stunner. And it's sheared and polished bottom just shows the quality of this specific glass artist's work. But this iridescent blue on this ruby ground was incredible to me. And again, a miniature. So, um, you know, finding a, a large lava vase, you're, you're still going to be spending in Loton, you're going to be spending 800 to $2,000. Um, for a miniature, uh, they're very hard to come by. I haven't seen one for sale in quite a long time. So I won't comment on value there, but I'll just say incredibly, incredibly rare. And what a beautiful, beautiful piece. So there you go for a Loton miniature. I hope you understand by seeing these, why I'm so incredibly impressed. So, um, to finish this and get this out of the way, they did jewelry and pendants set in sterling silver. Again, more lamps and paperweight um, vessels. And then it goes into Charles's work, and then it talks about his sons uh, in the back of the book. So again, uh, make sure you pick this up, Loton Art Glass by Thomas O'Connor and Charles G. Loton. Um, and I believe the date of this book, let me make sure that I tell you so you know, what edition this is. This is from 1990. Okay, so let me sneak that out of here and not shake the box anymore. And again, thank you so, so much for allowing me to throw this together. Now, Charles's work, let me take the um, old sticker off of this really quick. So there's one paperweight. And again, we're back to 
Charles Lowton's glass, okay? So uh, these are from the late 70s. Let's see here. This one is from 1976. Let's make sure you can see this. So there's his signature, Charles Lowton engraved, uh, 1976. This is a multi floral, or uh, multi-flora is what he called them. This is number 73 of 100. So a very limited run in 1976. So there's only a hundred of these in the world. And yes, each one is going to be completely different. So there's that one. We'll come back to that in a second. Don't think I'm going to leave that out. And then let's zoom in a little bit, crop out some more of the box for you, get these a little bit more centered because I like to be so perfect. Um, well, not perfect, but I like to um, be close to perfect. This one's Charles Lowton and a little bit fugitive with the signature, meaning that you really got to look. This is seven of 300. So it's number seven of 300, 1976. And this one, uh, let's see what he put on here. Can't, well, multi-flora again. So there is another one from 76 and look at those colors. We'll come back to that in just a minute. And then we go on to this one and it's probably going to be 76 as well. Yes, it is. Um, Charles Lowton, 1976. And again, um, I don't know what edition this is because this old label is here. So Charles Lowton, there you go. And a cat hair. <laughs> that's one of my, oh, that's one of my cat hairs from uh, my cat from years ago. Charles Lowton, 1976. And I've collected Lowton for a very long time. Um, so let me show you uh, the construction and the craft that it took to get this coloration and this these details in these trillium flowers and this vine-like design and this amazing iridescence, it looks like a nighttime sky and it looks heavenly, um, it looks almost unearthly, but so incredibly crafted. So there's that one up close, but look at the gradation of the blue on the white. It completely seduced me. And as soon as I saw these, this is what really started my collection of Charles Lowton's work. Um, and you can see why. Incredible craft, incredible skill, the colors and the design, absolutely stunning. Almost to me, breathtaking. Look how that looks, like the folds and the veins in the petals of a flower, and then that tiny punch of iridescence in the center. Look at the surface of these. Um, incredible, naturalistic, again, an odd to Art Nouveau, a nod to Tiffany from the turn of the century. Back when these were new, they were $100. And the Aurene, I've talked about that before, that is the surface, this glowing iridescent surface called Aurene, mostly um, with, you know, Stuben Aurene um, and Tiffany, um, you know, Aurene or Favril glass. Uh, this was, again, seven of 300. So only 300 of them in the world, and I own three of them. Um, wonderful craft. Now, years ago when I bought these, I believe I paid about $100 a piece. Now they're going for these specific ones, they're going between 500 and 700. Now, that's full retail. You might be able to find them for a little bit less, but they are going to escalate in value because when they go into collections, they usually stay in those collections. Now, someone might say, and they're pro probably someone is saying right now, boy, those sure look like Orient and Flume paperweights. Well, they most certainly do look like Orient and Flume, but Mr. Lowton was from Illinois. And that's where he spent, I believe, his entire life. And Orient and Flume paperweights, that's Orient and Flume, F-L-U-M-E, Orient and Flume is from Chino, California. So I'll get into a couple of my Orient and Flume paperweights in just a moment. But those are by Charles Lowton, Lowton Art Glass, and again, vintage and early for his work. So take those three in, and then you'll know what to look for when you look for Charles Lowton Glass. Now, his sons produced, and I believe it was John and also Daniel. Um, and let me s sneak these out of the way. Let me return them to a safe space. And thank you again so much for joining me. Um, I know that you know how much I love you, and I really do. I um, thought about this the whole day at work thinking, what am 
I going to show all of you? You know, and here we are. So let me make sure that I tell you correctly. Yes, here we go. This runs from 1990. You can tell that the coloration is different. This is by John Lowton. Let me, uh, let me go this way. Let me, yeah, there we go. I don't want to back out too far because then you see too much of the light box. Look at the iridescent surface on the inside. Kind of that stretch or that crazed surface on vintage stretch glass from the 20s and 30s. Again, a nod to what had come before this family. They really studied the history of glass and then took it to the next level. Look at these leaves, mottled opalescent pink and cream, kind of a golden aureen that's um, touching the tips of these incredible naturalistic leaves, and then a vine kind of construction. This one is about five and a half inches tall, and it is signed. Let me show you John's signature. He normally doesn't sign on the bottom as much. He signs on the edge of the vase, and let me zoom in on that. Let me try for you. Let me zoom in. There is John. Oops, there we go. Lotton, L O T T O N, 1990. Look at the coloration up close. That is like this alien skin, blue, green, purple iridescent. And then that push and pull of those, again, iridescent gold running through pink. Who would think? that that would actually work and function as a color combination on this opalescent white background. Incredible. Absolutely stunning. And then that bright, bright punch of that fluorescent um, fuchsia with that orange flash and a stretch. Incredible. Again, I get so excited when I see these pieces that um, what beautiful creations. I think I paid for this one. I think I paid one seventy. I did. I paid one seventy. Now for one from John in this size, probably close to about again four fifty or five hundred. Uh, but his work uh, is incredible, and you know that that's going to go up in value. You just know that it is. But works of masterful works in glass. Let's go into oh, let's go into this one. And then um, we'll move on from this. So this just came to me, and let me back out. Mm, no, it's not gonna. Let my 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 phone is really fighting with me. Look at the inside of this first. They put this bright purple aureen iridescent surface on the inside of the vessel, and look at the outside of the vessel. This ethereal heavenly opalescent pink white lime green slight punch of yellow and then it fades into this incredible iridescent purple from behind but this kind of divided naturalistic leaf pulled feather whatever you want to call it in technique but i call it heaven I call this a stunner. Now, this is by Daniel Lowton. I don't collect much of Daniel's work, but I, again, I don't focus on contemporary items in my collection. So this video is a little out of the ordinary for me, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, Daniel Lowton um, signed right there, and then from 1988, again, sheared and polished bottom. So again, in that um, uh, tradition of the family, the attention to craft and the attention to detail in these masterworks of glass, it's there. The respect of material and form is, I think, what got me on this one. Um, now, I paid very recently, I believe I paid for something, for... 95, yeah, 495, um, 495. I wouldn't be afraid to ever, I wouldn't be afraid to stop it. I would go 15, well, I'd go up to 1500 for this. I, I, I would. Uh, there's something that makes me incredibly, incredibly happy with this. I studied this today. I left it out on my desk as I worked and I kept it there. You know, and my, my, my coworkers would testify. I left it out for all of us to enjoy. And we all did today. Um, I worked next to Jimmy today. And of course, I made fun of him the whole day. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jimmy, for putting up with me. Um, but, uh, this incredible, incredible form, incredible color. Uh, I, I could talk about that for 
uh, 12 more hours. <laughs> and I know you don't want to hear it, <laughs> so I won't. But anyways, yeah, incredible. And uh, I wish I could get it in the full camera. And maybe I'll, I'll take that to one of the uh, camera up videos. But uh, I just wanted to get this done for you. Now, Orient and Flume, um, Orient and Flume paperweights. So there's this one, and then Orient and Flume on, on this one. And um, Orient and Flume, Chino, California. I believe they're still producing. And, and, and these are only two of, I think I have 70... I think I have 71 now. I sold 11, and I think I'm down to 71. They're all different. Uh, they do get very expensive nowadays. Uh, this one is, let's show you the Orient and Flume signature. So there's Orient. I don't know why my camera's not focusing. There we go. Orient and Flume, F-L-U-M-E, Chino, California. You can see a little bit of scratching and wear. That's okay. Now, chips on the edge and chips to the outside are bruises. That's really frowned upon. Wear to the aureen is very much so frowned upon as well, as well in collecting. So just be careful with that because it's a very, um, very easily damaged surface. So be careful with that. Only ever wipe these down with a soft cloth. Don't ever use a, a harsh abrasive. 106. D and then 1977. So that's just the um, make number, cataloging number. And then this one was produced in 1977. Look at that. So you have this kind of bleeding heart or these heart and vine design. This one glows from the inside. This one has its like, you know, it looks like it has its own little light on the inside. And then this again, why not push and pull that surface with this pulled feather in iridescent blue, lime green, yellow, phenomenal. Look at those little bleeding hearts all over the place. Again, in great condition. But that one, I think I paid, um, let me think here. I think I paid 70. Yeah, I paid 70 and now it would go around 250 to 275 on that one. So be prepared to pay up for these. They're, they're not really inexpensive, but they have gone up and I think they're going to continue to do that. This one, much more complex in its construction, much more courageous to put this ground on the inside and then to float these heaven-like flowers on just under the surface. They're still encased, so those are not on the surface. They're just under the surface of that clear glass. But to blow this on a cane and to make sure that these tendrils don't bleed or go into something else, this is mastery of, of glasswork. Uh, and you cannot deny its beauty. There's nothing wrong with the end result being beautiful with, with things. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. C140K and then 1978 on this one. Most of my Orient Flume stayed before 1980. In the 1980s, they changed the design a little bit, and it lost me a little bit. Orient and Flume right there. There you go, Orient and Flume. And in the 80s, it, it wasn't bad. There was nothing wrong with uh, the production, but it just... Something happened. The designs were different. The motifs were different. And I didn't love them as much. Let me zoom in on those two and let you take that goodness in. Absolutely incredible Orient and Flume paperweights from Chino, California. Now, um, oh, one more vase. And, and there's other things out of reach of me right now, which <laughs> gets frustrating to me. Let me just scoot these back. Let's just scoot those back out of the way. So now, this one, Orient and Flume. And I wish, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's just not going to, yeah, well, we're going to try. We're going to back out a little bit more. I don't want you to see the mess on my desk, that's for sure. <laughs> so there, there it is. This is a, a paperweight encased Orient and Flume bamboo vase and, and, and the form and, and the coloration, the craft, the polish, the finish, this in encased and trapped leaves, bamboo leaves, bamboo shoots, the design of this. And what I loved is you could see the bamboo stalks from behind. So as you view from the front, you can see way back there, there's more bamboo that's actually finished with little nodules on the inside. So when you look, look at the attention to detail on the inside. Look at that. I mean, why would you put that on the inside? You're not going to see it. Well, yeah, as like an aquarium vase or a paperweight vase, yeah, you're going to see it. It's You're going to see it through the front. Incredible craft and the weight of these very, very heavy. Let's see if we can show you on the bottom. Orient and Flume. And then there's the catalog number. Much, much longer because uh, this is probably from the late 80s or early 90s. Uh, and then there's Sillars, S-I-L-L-A-R-S. That's Bruce Sillars. 
Uh, look him up. Incredible, incredible. And this is 159 of 300. So again, it was a limited run. And there is the Orient and Flume from Chino, California label. There's the Orient and Flume label. So sometimes that's missing, but you will know once you start to see these in real life, you will know. I mean, I could be at an antique store, antique mall auction. I'll see Orient and Flume from across the room and I'm already like, oh yeah, Orient and Flume, no doubt. <laughs> I've gotten so well versed with knowing and I do find quite a bit of them out in the wild. But look at that vase and it's, uh, that one's eight and a half inches. I think eight and a half inch. Yeah, eight and a half inches. So incredible, incredible, great coloration, very naturalistic. And I loved that one very much. Um, we're almost done. So the last two things I want to show you as I scoot those back for your viewing pleasure while I reach for these. The last two, I mentioned Grant um, Randolph early, and I hope I said Randolph and not Rudolph, but I hope I said Randolph. Um, this is one of his pendants, and this is from the late 70s. I think this one is, uh, let's see here, as I got a big fingerprint on it, 1978, um, Grant Randolph Studios. Uh, this is number 95 of 250. Uh, it's sterling silver, and the Stinson, I'm not exactly sure what we got going on there. That might be the silversmith that set this. I haven't done enough research. Now, that's the original snake chain that it was on. But look at this. Uh, to make a wearable pendant with a paperweight style glass disc. And you know the ring I made. Let me Let me find my ring I made the other day. Oh, it's on my desk somewhere. As I fumble around, here it is. So here's my, um, here's my Jabo ring that I made the other day. And you can tell my inspiration. Look, I live with this, um, for the last mm, 15 or 18 years of my life. And then I went in the studio and made mine. You know, I made my, my Jabo ring, um, that I so carefully soldered together. Oh, look, I can leave that on. But look at those two together. Now I would wear that pendant at that, and that ring together. Um, every day of my life. <laughs> and I probably will wear it tomorrow. Let me sneak that back on. I love my J-Bo ring. Um, and thank you so much for watching that video. And again, to anyone who's watching this, please go to my past videos because I have really tried very hard to give you quality content. And thank you again so much for all the support. So look at the Irene finish in that and the way that bezel just so carefully is rocked over that. That craft is incredible, both in the art glass and the silver work. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to turn a paperweight into a wearable piece of jewelry. Absolutely wonderful. Two different, you know, companies, Orient Flume and um, Grant's work. But then my friend Rick, who I love very much, I've always loved this paperweight. My friend Rick gifted me this incredible Orient and Flume glass and sterling silver pin pendant. So look at how genius a pin. And then they also gave you this little, you know, I've done this for many clients over the years, but they gave you this little tube with a little bail on it. So then you can turn that into a pendant. Now I have to look underneath here and make sure I put it in there right. There we go. Uh, so thank you again so much for bearing with me. I'm going to finish here in just a few moments. Orient and Flume. There is the um, model number and the 1987 sterling silver mounting. Incredible. Aurene surface. Two amazing little flowers. This uh, tendril design or, or a vine. And then you've got the hanging heart. And I loved the push and pull of the colors. Lime green, aurene yellow, and a bright punch of truthful cherry red lined in black. This just glows. And it doesn't need to be any bigger than this. Normally, I wear gigantic jewelry. doesn't need to be any bigger. But again, that's what I've lived with as a beautiful gift. And that's what I made. That, that's what I, I, I created the other day. So you can see the inspiration I live with as well. So I guess that concludes the video. Please understand that, you know, I, I don't normally collect, um, I don't collect contemporary glass. I just don't. Um, but yet here's a collection of contemporary glass from my collection. I usually focus on antique and vintage. Um, but you know, I bent the rules and I'm so glad I did years ago. Look at that. It just looks like, they just belong together. Um, so Rick, thank you so, so much for this amazing gift. Uh, um, I, I love you very much, my brother. You have been incredible to me through the years. And say hello to your lovely mo mother for me, please. All right, that concludes this. You know how I end it because it's absolutely truthful. 
Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. And also, please go to my past videos and continue to watch them. My short feeds have been blowing up. So thank you so much for whatever you're doing for me. I really appreciate it very much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night.